up guys this is brian mouse with the term mechanic brand today i want to talk to you about my hill yard back there i've been seeding buffalo grass almost exclusively into that hill yard this summer summer of 2022 for all of you people watching in the future most of you watching this are really just trying to learn a little bit so i want to explain my uh findings just observations that i've had uh, thoughts that I've gone through. I don't have extensive experience growing buffalo grass. This is my first season trying to do it. Uh, I have learned a, an enormous amount over the past few months simply through experimentation. Long story short, buffalo grass is the way forward uh, for lawns in the future, in my opinion. I'm going to be constantly advocating for the establishment of buffalo grass and residential lawn, uh, turf, turf lawn environments which is why I'm trying my very best to experiment as much as possible and, uh, I don't know, I guess learn more than everyone else out there. But I don't want to reserve all of that information for me. I want to pass on as much as I possibly can to you. So let's go take a look at my hill yard, uh, good and bad. I'm going to show you my experiences and, my, and kind of give you my thoughts. This is not going to be a polished video. I don't want you to expect it to be polished or, uh, or visually appealing. This is literally very deep information that very few people out there are actually providing. Uh, as I've said in previous videos, buffalo grass is a warm season grass. It grows best during the hot weather of the summer. If you're going to seed this in the spring, it's not going to germinate because the soil temperatures are too cold. If you're going to seed it in the fall, it's going to die over the winter because it doesn't have enough time for the rooting process to get underground. Most likely with very limited places around the country, let's say like uh, those areas of the country that are uh, temperate weather but they never freeze, maybe you could get away with it. Uh, by doing seeding at any other point of the year. But for the majority of people, you're gonna be seeding this at the end of spring and the beginning parts of summer. This patch right here is my first patch of buffalo grass. It actually looks pretty good. You can see that it's holding up to uh, the summer better than my perennial rye um, Kentucky bluegrass patch right here that I seeded last year. This patch right here was seeded July 3rd. It's a very small little rectangle. Just seeded July, July 3rd. It started sprouting about 10 days later and it continued sprouting for a few weeks after that. We had 100 degree weather in uh, a lot of July and with the exception of maybe three or four days over the past two months, this uh, our daytime temperatures have never uh, have always been at 90 degrees or more. There's been a couple days where we dipped into the 80s. But as you can see, it's doing really well, but it's still thin. So we still got dirt patches here. We still got dirt patches. And as you can see, it is established enough to start putting on uh, the male seed heads. So I've said that this grass type really could be used in a no-mow scenario. If you didn't ever want to mow your grass, you could have buffalo grass and it would start getting a little bit shaggy, kind of like I got right up there at the corner. See, that's a little bit shaggy. I have actually mowed that once, but it's already shaggy. For whatever reason, it's just doing really well right there. But if you were doing a no mow scenario, you would have to understand that you're always going to get these little seed heads popping up. Now, again, this grass is what? Was it nine weeks old? That's, that's some field grass. That's not supposed to be there. But the buffalo grass is only nine weeks old. It's two months and a week. So we're already getting seed heads and we're already getting a lot of these lateral stolons. So this is one that I've pulled up off the ground. It's actually a whole bunch of them that I pulled up off the ground here. Um, and I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, I used straw, a straw blanket to seed this area because we're on a hill. Uh, it helps retain moisture and prevent erosion. But when I went to take the straw blanket off, I decided to grab my rake and rake up all of the extra straw pieces. And to my dismay, I actually pulled up a whole ton of stolons off the ground. So now they're all floppy. And I'm going to assume that over time there's one that's not floppy. Uh, that one's still down. But point here is uh, I learned my lesson. When this stuff is new, these stolons haven't re-rooted into the ground. So the whole point is they grow this way and they, and then they root back down, they keep going. And that's how it self repairs and kind of fixes itself over time and spreads to take over an area. But when they're young, 
I'm not sure what's going to happen here because this was sitting on the ground. So next time I do this, when they're young, I'm not going to rake this. I need to give these stolons a chance to root down. So uh, I have no idea what's going to happen with that. I'll probably eventually hit it with a lawnmower and clip it off and new stolons will uh, start spreading. Now I also learned when it comes to weeds, I've actually sprayed this spot a couple times with Tenacity, so a Mesotrione product. And remember, we're only nine weeks old, and I've sprayed this twice with Tenacity. A lot of the weeds have gone away, but the Mesotrione hasn't touched these weeds. But I have learned that the Mesotrione does not damage the buffalo grass if you spray it according to label instructions. But I've also learned that if I take an Iron Hedda product, which is uh, kind of a weed killer, but they don't use chemicals, if I spray this, these will die, but the grass doesn't. So even new young grass, buffalo grass, isn't going to be affected by the spraying of an Iron Hedda weed killer. And that's good to know because over here in this patch, I haven't sprayed it yet, there's a ton of those weeds. However, the Mesotrion is killing other kinds of weeds. Here's some more. Let me get my shadow out of the way. You can see some of these weeds whitening up, paling out. These things are slowly dying. But this stuff, to kill that off, to give, uh, to give the buffalo grass that's in here uh, less competition, I can actually take the Iron Hitta and spray it down, and all of this stuff is going to die, or at least the majority of it, but the buffalo grass is trying to peek through, isn't going to be affected. Unfortunately, I didn't take a video of that, but I probably will take video of me doing it here so I can show it in action. Now, this area does look pretty good for young buffalo grass. The thing is, this area, when I seeded it, I was paying 100% attention to it. I was keeping water on it and it was fantastic. Buffalo grass is supposed to be very heat, very drought tolerant. But the thing is, during the seeding process, it's a water hog because it takes a lot of time to get that seed to germinate. And because the plant, I don't know, the plant is just, it's just delicate um, at that time of year. I mean, they are seedlings in 100 degree weather. So what I'm going to show you here is my sad failure. I mean, this is, failures are just, I don't know, it's how you learn. So this area right here was also seeded, and I did the same thing. I used the straw mats that you see over there. Ike's company actually uh, sent me these straw mats for my testing purposes, and I love them. So I'm going to put some links down to them below. But what I did here is I took the straw off too early. The straw was actually shading the area. So as you're putting water on it to get the seed to germinate, of course, you need to do it for a long period of time. Buffalo grass doesn't germinate fast. The first germination seeds that I had over here was about 10 days, but it kept going for almost a full month, which means to get them all to germinate, you really have to keep spritzing this constantly for a solid month. And over here, I did that pretty good, but then I took the straw off and I went on vacation for five days thinking that because of the heat and drought tolerance, everything would be fine, but no. These are still seedlings. This was my error in judgment. These are still seedlings. And we, I did a lot of damage to a serious amount of buffalo grass that had germinated here. And look at this. I mean, all of these things, this should be nice and green and growing. But right now, it's struggling to stay alive. It's been like this for like three weeks straight now. And I'm sure that some of it is going to come back, but a lot of it is just dead. It was like wasted effort, wasted seed. And even what does live through all of this, now that I've been spritzing it down, and you can see I'm, I'm dry already here, what does live, we're getting well into September now. I don't know how much of this is going to root enough to get through our cold season winters here. So you can see other areas are a little bit better down there it's a little bit more green over here we get more shade so everything's doing a little bit better um, when i put water here it stays here longer so even though buffalo grass is a sun loving grass 
during the establishment phase, it's really important to keep it moist, which is significantly harder to do when it's 100 degrees out. And it's way harder to do when you can't be at home for, you know, every single day for 30 days straight. Now over there, it's a little bit better. Maybe because we get a little bit of dappled sun through the, uh, the chicken coop here. But I would advise covering it with straw. So you could use one of these straw rolls that Ike sent me, um, or you could just go off to a farm and garden store and just pick up straw bales and throw it down on top of it. Whatever it takes, uh, you got to get some shade on it. The, uh, the sun is going to keep everything nice and warm so that it will germinate and grow, but the shade is going to help retain the moisture, just like the peat moss. I got peat moss on this too, and it's still, it's just roasting. All right, moving on. Over here in this little patch, this patch was seeded somewhere around July 13th. This is a mixture of Kentucky bluegrass, perennial rye, and buffalo grass. Now what I want you to see here is that we've got a little bit of uh, stress going on here because that's full sun right over here. It's harder to tell, but everything here is far more vibrant because we get the dappled sun coming through our, uh, whatever you want to call this. But you can't really tell that the buffalo grass is in there. But you can if you know what you're looking for. Since this is almost two months old, it's actually started putting on those seed heads. Look at this right there. That's a buffalo grass seed head. I know for a fact that there's buffalo grass in there. Both perennial rye and Kentucky bluegrass do not have seed heads that look like that. There's another one right there. There's a weed that I'm going to have to hit. Point being is you can mix these things together. Now, long term, I'm expecting a lot of the perennial rye and the Kentucky bluegrass to kind of pull back in density uh, as it dies off because this area is not hit by our irrigation. And I would suspect that the buffalo grass will slowly take over as the dominant grass in this area. But only time will tell what that's ultimately going to look like. Now, this mixture here is very similar to the mixture that I put back here. The difference is back here, it's only perennial rye and buffalo grass. And the only reason I put perennial rye back here was for extremely fast germination to stop erosion on the hill. I knew and expected the buffalo grass, when I put it in here, it would be there for a very long time before it established itself enough to really hold the hill in place. The perennial rye, I was able to germinate in about five days. So the perennial rye really put the structure into the dirt, into the soil here, to keep erosion at bay. I don't want my hill eroding down. I 100% expect virtually all of the perennial rye here to die off while the buffalo grass takes over. Now eventually this will be almost 100% buffalo grass all on its own. And the rooting of the buffalo grass, which is much, much slower, will eventually hold the hill in place. Now, moving on, as we go up the hill onto this section right here, this section was only seeded one month ago. And you can tell that it looks terrible. Like, it's just not working. And here's my reasoning for that. Here, here's my thoughts on that. So you can tell down here we do have some buffalo coming in right next to some other weeds and I'm going to hit that with some mesotrion here in the next couple days. But as we go up the hill there's less and less and less buffalo grass and by the top of the hill there's basically nothing up there at all. And my suspicion has to do with the seeds got roasted, and I suspect a lot of them um, are no longer viable. Simply because I put the seed down, I'm going to call it somewhere around August 2nd, and then two weeks later, somewhere around uh, August 18th, we went on a five-day uh, trip vacation, and they probably did not get anywhere near enough water during that time. So all of the germination that was starting to happen at the two-week mark, which is what I was seeing over here, 
never actually took place. Now, can those seeds be brought back? I don't know, because I've been trying for the past two weeks, and, all, and I'm getting almost nowhere with it. Chances are good that I don't have nearly enough peat moss on this. I probably spread it too thin, and I probably took the straw mat off too early. So if I did this again, I would put a thicker layer of peat moss on, and I would leave the straw on for a lot longer. Let me go up and show you another little observation having to do with the seed itself. So I covered all of these seeds with peat moss, and now you see that they are not covered at all. These are much bigger seeds than you typically see when you're planting grass. You're putting like fescue or Bermuda or Kentucky bluegrass. All of the seeds are way, way smaller than these. Most likely in the future, when I do this again, I'm gonna be covering these seeds with a much thicker layer of peat moss. For one, that is going to help keep the seeds wet longer and because the seeds are significantly larger and they take longer to germinate anyway they should be able to pop through a thicker layer of peat moss far easier than any of those other smaller grass seed varieties now as an experiment because i'm constantly experimenting up here i've left the straw mat on and i have learned that when i have doubled up the straw mat so instead of one layer of straw I have two layers or more. It actually takes a lot more water to saturate the ground underneath the straw. However, if I can take the time to really get enough water to saturate everything through multiple layers of straw, all the way to the ground underneath, everything stays moist far, far better. Now, as an example, take a look at this spot right here. This spot has been covered up with a very thick layer of straw the whole time and it's the last seed that I ever germinated. And look, not that it looks great, but this stuff was, this seed was only sown three weeks ago. And we've got buffalo grass coming up. Now there's some native grasses here too, but at least there is buffalo grass. As I come over here, another thick layer of straw, I've still got buffalo grass. It's all starting to come up. This tells me, and this has taught me, that if I'm going to try to germinate this stuff, it's better to put a thicker layer of stuff, straw, peat moss, over the top of it and water it less frequently. But when I water it, I have to water it deeper. Down here, this area, down here, this area had a very thin layer of peat moss put on it, and I took the straw off early, and there's nothing. Over here, I had extra straw on it. I've left the straw on it for a longer period of time and I actually water it less frequently. But when I water it, I really water it hard and deep and everything is actually coming in. This is how you do it. Don't do it like that, like I did down there. Now, the last thing I'm gonna throw in this video now uh, for observational purposes is coloring. You can see right here, we got a lime green, going into the perennial rye mixture, which is much darker green. You can even see it here. If you compare uh, what looks good here to what looks good in my main lawn, the main lawn is darker than this. I have not yet tested spraying liquid iron onto buffalo grass. I'm very curious if I choose to do that regularly, if we can get a deeper color out of this. I will test that in the future. I've also got new ideas about how to seed buffalo grass to actually make it uh, a less uh, water intensive process during the establishment phase. My first attempt was up here where I literally put a mound of peat moss uh, on the ground and buried a single seed into every mound, kind of like you would do in a garden. The problem up here was I decided to take uh, a little cup and stick it on so that I could kind of retain moisture in each mound, kind of like a miniature greenhouse, except for one day I forgot to take it off in the morning. So the, the cup sat on the mounds, each mound for the majority of a day that got all the way up to about 96 degrees. I think I just killed off the seed by cooking it because there's only a couple mounds 
where uh, the seed has come up. Now I think this might be an option for maybe a spring seeding. So if you're trying to germinate buffalo grass, let's call it in April when temperatures aren't up into the mid 90s quite yet, maybe you could do that without cooking the grass. Or maybe you just, I don't know, on the ball more than I was and you just get it done better. But I do have other ideas uh, as to how to do this in a, uh, in a more efficient manner. Uh, it has to do with making my own plugs. Now I'm gonna have videos about this in the future. Again, these are experimental kinds of videos that I'll get to. I'm gonna make my own plugs, stick them in the ground. So I do all the germinating inside, all that first initial rooting inside the house. Uh, or a windowsill or garage or some sort of like controlled environment and then stick them in the ground later. This is the last area that I seeded right up through here. Now this only has one layer of straw on it as opposed to this it has two layers. I suspect that this is not germinating as well because it just roasts in the sun a little bit faster. I haven't actually pulled this off yet. This is my experiment where I'm leaving this on for as long as possible. Later this fall, I'll probably have some videos where I peel this off and kind of take a look at it. If you're watching this video all the way here to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to link to my buffalo grass playlist here in the corner. It might not be here quite yet, but it will be right there. I want you guys to understand that I believe that this grass is the way forward for an enormous number of, of residential lawns across this country. This is proving to me to be a very difficult grass to get established, but I really, really believe, especially based on my first patch down there, wherever it is, that this is a very low maintenance grass. Like I barely have to water that at all. And it's only been two months since it was seeded. And at this point we are still in the nineties. Like tomorrow is supposed to be a hundred degrees on September 6th. That grass is thriving with no water and extremely high heat. If we can just get it installed, then that means we have a green lawn that carries all of the benefits of lawns. I got an entire playlist about lawn benefits, which I'll link to down in the description below. It will carry all of the main benefits of having a lawn with almost none of the input. It's not only, not only does it require low water, but it requires very low uh, uses of nitrogen, which is fantastic for uh, the fertilization problems that a lot of uh, farms and residential settings are, are seeing these days. You don't need that much fertilizer on it. So I'm gonna be going into some low nitrogen fertilization programs also here in the future, here on the channel. Uh, a lot of content is gonna come out having to do with buffalo grass, uh, but it will, of course, it will relate to anyone, regardless of the grass type that you follow. Anyway, take a look at this playlist up here for more buffalo grass content, and of course in the description below for supplemental materials. Thank you so much for watching my meandering walk and talk.